guys i hope everyone's doing okay today we are out this morning on dolphin island here at the old golf course and we are trying to jig up some croaker some live bait we've been wanting to go offshore for a long time and we hope today is going to be the day for that opportunity uh, we want to go out by some ships we want to drop some live croaker maybe catch a few cobia uh, if nothing else hopefully we go out and catch a few snapper get our big two per limit bag you know how that goes but let's uh start catching some bait and uh we'll start heading offshore just leave it there for a sec garrett's got the first croaker on the sabiki rig there like i always tell you got well in a video i've done before i always tip my flies with a little piece of shrimp kind of like this now you're guaranteed to catch croaker instead of sitting there making a couple drags missing some you tip each one it takes a little more time but it's guaranteed to catch a croaker every time garrett caught this little spanish mackerel on his little sabiki fly <laughs> he's so tiny yeah Hopefully he oh, he's still good. Let him go. Uh oh. Look at his little black fins on the top. Oh yeah. Like a little mullet. Like a little torpedo. Bye little fella. Garrett's hooked up with something here. What is it? Oh man, what the heck is that? That's a Ruby Red Lips. <laughs> That's a jumbo snapper bait there. Garrett's trying to catch him some bee liner. Man, that thing's big enough to fillet. Can you fillet him? Yeah, I think I might fillet, try to fillet him. We're on, we had a live croaker on, boys. We got something on here. Live croaker. Oh gosh. Here comes the dolphin. Don't let him eat it. Look at him. <laughs> he wants that little snapper so bad. Oh gosh. No. You can't have it, Flipper. Well, actually, I, after I vent him off, you can chase him. <laughs> gosh, that's a, that's a terrible thing when you see dolphins like that on the reef. We're gonna attempt to let him go. Oh, we are? Yeah. I don't know if he's got a chance with that dolphin swimming around. We'll find out. I mean, he is circling the boat, waiting on that snapper. Oh, here he comes. oh gosh. Go ahead and toss it, Garrett. Oh, he swam down. Oh, oh no! Oh, missing. The dolphin missed him. <laughs> Oh gosh, he didn't make it. <laughs> he swam down and got annihilated. <laughs> oh gosh, poor snapper. Oh man. Oh, fish on with the live croaker. Let's go. Something decent here. Something decent here. There we go. I've been hitting a few spots today and just couldn't come up with nothing. Oh, it's a good snapper. I think it's going to be a keeper. Yes. Oh, it's barely a keeper. <laughs> hey, those are good eating though, man. You can't, you can't throw them guys back if they're 16 and they're good to eat. Sometimes those big ones get a little tough, but this guy, man, I had a, a big live croaker on there too. All right, let's go. Right there, something's got bait pushed up to the surface right there. You can see something's going through there, hitting them. Yeah, see, there's your fish right here. Something's going through there and knocking them things silly.
All right, so guys, what we're looking for is I'm going to zoom in. I got a super pyramid there. Uh, and a brain. It's kind of hard when you zoom in to about 100 to 50 feet, you know, with your graph. It can be kind of difficult to land on these things. But I'll show you what I'm seeing on that screen. I don't look, that wasn't even marked. And there's something there. Huge piece of structure right there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that uh, description. It's Fish ST, enter, save. Gosh, Garrett, that's a, there's some kind of huge structure right there. So we're going to go ahead and drop down. I wasn't even on the pyramids. I was back here off of it. Yeah. Drop down. It actually went by. All right, guys. Knocker rig. That was at a six, eight ounce and a live croaker. Let's see if we can't get bait, bit. Guys. He's got a pinfish over here and it's just getting whacked by something. Yeah. Whatever it was, I felt like it gave out. Oh, dude, it's a mangrove snapper, bro. No way. Yes. Yes. Get in the boot. <laughs> Let's go. Look at that mangrove, son. Nice. There we go, man. That is a delicious fish right there. That is a mangrove black snapper or gray snapper. It is delicious. That is what you want. I've caught many of these inshore if y'all have watched a lot of my videos, but they really get big out here offshore. All right, I got stuff everywhere and it's getting rough out here. I don't know if you can see, but the little trolling motor trolling motor about can't keep up and it's just getting picked up out of the water going going crazy winds winds going nuts right now but uh we're gonna try to fish for a little while before we head in gotta go in guys it got, got rough out here got some three and four foot rollers I hate I had to cut the trip short, but sometimes it is what it is. Garrett started getting sick also. I think he's ready to go. But uh, we'll talk about it when we get to the beach. All right, so we had to come off the water really quick. The wind was blowing 20 miles an hour, and the waves were getting three and four footers. So I had to kind of put away all my digital equipment, all my cameras all that stuff because I didn't want to ruin them. I have ruined GoPros and phones and everything else out there on the water when it got like that because as you hit the swells, the wind's blowing from the west and it blows the wind like right back on you and all the water, like right in your face. But anyway, we're back at the house and I'm gonna show you guys how to blacken some snapper. I got some mangrove snapper and I got a piece of red snapper here that we're gonna blacken. Let's get it going. All right, so what I have here is a piece of black or mangrove snapper here, or gray snapper, and a piece of red snapper here. And I'm gonna cut the bloodlines out of them. Just kinda, kinda make a little wedge cut. Get the bloodline out, because that will definitely make the fish taste kinda strange. Unless you like bloodline, I don't. Uh, 
just going to get that cut out of here. Uh, as you can see, there's a different type of tint or color to the uh, mangrove snapper and then the red snapper. Uh, I believe the mangrove snapper is just a little more dense to me. I don't know if that's just me, but they they look almost as far as the meat, they look very similar. Um, just a little bit darker on the, the mangrove or black snapper. We're going to cut the bloodlines off of those. We're going to toss this in the garbage. We don't want no bloodlines. Alright, we're going to get some Chef Paul Perdome's black and red fish magic or any type of blackening and seasoning. It don't matter. Pour it on the plate. We're going to coat both sides of the fish with it. Alright, what's important here is I have a black iron skillet and olive oil. And the reason I use this is to get that blackening and seasoning real hot and crispy make that real good blackening coat and a lot of people want to use butter uh, i've tried using a, a normal pan with normal vegetable oil and it it doesn't blacken quite the same way so we use olive oil and it really makes the blackening and season coat well so let's Take our fish, drop it on that blackening season and coat it really good. Some people like a little bit on there, like kind of like seasoning the fish. I like to coat the fish to make it a, like an actual blackened coat on the fish. Okay, so. I'm gonna heat the olive oil. Let's pour a little more olive oil in this pan. Make it thick enough to where it will definitely cook both sides of the fish. Uh, when you get olive oil hot, it does tend to flash off. So you might have to turn your vent on and suck those olive oil fumes off of it. But we're gonna get this hot. And while that's heating up over there, we're going to cut these fish into smaller portions. Just roll it around and coat it. Coat it real nice. I love the way blackening season smells too, man. It's, it really is kind of a Cajun dish. Delicious. Uh, I don't think they're going to give you all the ingredients on here. They're trying to keep that a secret. But it just says salt, spices, paprika, garlic, and onion. <laughs> but they don't actually tell you what's in it because they're trying to keep that a secret. And that's okay. They should. Coat, coat, coat. Run out, put some more on the plate. I'm going to serve my fish up today with some butter beans and some mixed vegetables. Got me some butter beans over here and I'm going to put a little salt and pepper on them. Alright, so we got the olive oil starting to heat up a little bit. It looks like it's ready starting to see a little fume come off of it you're going to take your snapper and drop it in there be careful it's going to pop you you want about three to four minutes on each side it don't take very long but you can see how it's cooking that fish i mean it's that olive oil is just heated up really hot it's cooking it really well so the trick to it is having a, a pan that can get hot enough to get the black and season hot enough to black it and make the coat really dark and crispy. Alright, so once you get one side cooked, 
about two minutes, flip it over, and it, it will be really dark, coated here. It looks burnt, but I promise you it's not. It's just that blackening season getting blackened like it's supposed to be. It don't take long. Let each side cook a few, probably like maybe two minutes. You can kind of flip it over and check it. So that, that looks done to me. There we go. That little, the little smaller pieces are going to cook faster, of course. The thicker, the longer it's going to take. You don't want to burn the outside and leave the inside pink. And uh, that's it for the fish. It doesn't take long. It don't take a whole lot of steps to it. But there you go. Blackened. That coat is blackened. You know, and trust me, you may think it's burnt on camera, but it is not. It's a delicious blackened coat. Alright, so there we go. I got me a side of mixed vegetables and some butter beans. Got my blackened snapper here. I'm going to take a little lemon. Just squirt it on top. Squeeze. It's really easy, really simple to do, and it tastes great. Look at that. What do you guys think? Alright guys, so we got our butts absolutely whipped on the way back in. Uh, as soon as we got out there and started catching fish, we had to come back in because it was just too rough to fish. The trolling motor wasn't even hold position anymore, and uh, actually one of the waves swamped the front of the boat. Uh, luckily, it all ran off the deck. Uh, but anyway, this uh, particular way of cooking snapper, blackening it, it's really great and it's really easy to do. The fish is very light on the inside and it's got a crispy coating on the outside, giving it that Cajun Creole flavor. It is absolutely delicious. It's a great way to cook any kind of fish um, redfish, snapper, even I've even done it with catfish and it tasted just as good as any other fish. But a lot of that video I had to voice over because the wind was so bad that it was muffling the sound, popping the camera. When I tried to play the, the video back, all you could hear was wind. So I'm going to have to get a microphone for the camera the next trip we go out. And hopefully I'll fix these issues as we go. I'm still learning how to do YouTube. Like I've always kind of messed around with YouTube. Uh, managed to get 3,000 subscribers, so now I think I'm gonna take it a little bit more seriously and bring good audio and video quality to the channel. And like I said, I wanna see the channel do better in the future. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next video.